Hi, thanks for checking out our channel. Here's going to be a maybe repair video on a uh, Gallagher S10. It's a small uh, solar fence charger. I think they came out with this model here in the States, um, not, or North America in general. I think in 2014, 15, somewhere in that range. Um, so it's been about 10 years ago, roughly, they came out with this, with this unit. Uh, have they eventually launched uh, two other models along with it? A couple you know, within a year or two later, called the S16 and the S20. They all share the same um, overall look and casing and design. The circuit boards are different on the inside, very very different, or very very little different with them, but they are different. Um, good little units. We don't see a lot of them coming for repair, uh, but now this one's here. This one's a 20, 2017 model. I don't know the story behind it. The customer says it doesn't work. Well, actually, it does indeed come on. Huh. <laughs> Lightning. Well, you can't see the light flashing. There it goes. You can see it there. It's not, the camera's not picking up. Eh, it picks it up pretty good. Well, it's so far so good. I didn't even, I thought the customer said it didn't work, but we'll see. Just because the light's flashing doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean, it mean, doesn't mean the thing's working. But let's get our little fancy, uh, fancy tester out here. We're going to use a um, energizer performance meter, they call it. And what we'll do is we'll uh, turn it on, turn this on as well, and back this up a little bit so we have a little more room here. And we're going to go peak voltage, open circuit, no load, and we're going to go across the fence and ground up here. And we'll watch this number. This will tell us the voltage on it. We're getting about 7,000 volts out of it. Six and a half. Usually right, right, usually right around six or so on these things. Maybe seven at the highest is what we've ever seen. We don't get a lot of these in for repair. Um, now this is a point one stored joule, or yeah, stored joule, so probably like point zero five output. So not a very um, hard hitting unit by any means, but it's a psychological shock with these things put out. So your body or the animal's body or whatever is natural reaction is to like go with the thing and bounce you off the fence line. Let's see what kind of um, voltage we get. We're gonna go five hundred ohm load. We're gonna go across fence to ground. I was about right, 0 0.05 output joule, so not a very stout unit, but let's go over to 1,000 ohms. Adjust our range. 2.4 kV, went to a higher ohms reading, which is a less resistance across fencing ground, at 0 0.07 output. So that's probably what it's going to be. If it's like 750 ohm resistor between these two, maybe. Get 0 0.08. You know, we might get a little bit more, um, possibly, but it kind of petered out at 500, where it went past its threshold. See, dropped like a stone. So this is for curiosity. See how fast this thing pulses. See what's pulse speed and um, pulse width and all that fun stuff is. All right, this first number. All right, the first number on, what am I doing here? It's a little slow. Maybe the battery's a little low, I didn't check the battery. All right, so that number on the left there, which my wire's in the way, is two and a half. That's, that means the pulse speed on this is two and a half seconds. And the number on the right is in milliseconds. That's how often the shock is actually, when that tick noise goes off, that's how long the duration of the shock is. So 0 0.05 milliseconds, I guess what that is. Let's uh, check this battery. Let's um, turn this off. Let's turn this unit off. Let's check the battery. This is a little 6-volt battery inside these things. Shit. Drop the washers. It came off the terminal there. Uh, I need a flat screwdriver or Phillips one or two. Take these screws out. 
loose or well, it doesn't usually come out all the way. It usually just loosens up so far and stops. Bugs gotten in here, made the home pretty normal. That's uh, probably the original battery. Yeah, Matoma. That's the battery that Gallagher used. Brand wise, it used in here. But yeah, this is 2017 model, so that's a little age to it. Let's put our tester voltmeter on the uh, battery. This is a uh, excuse. Me, this is a six volt, uh, six volt, four amp hour battery. 6.5 that's uh pretty charged up a bad glare here but there you go see there's 6.5 volts it's a battery I think fully charged these hit maybe 6.7 6.8 but all I've ever seen as high as these batteries will go so see there's a factory sticker from whenever they put it in this unit so let's put our we got a I got a load deal over here or on my power supply I can set my power supply to around We'll put it at 7.2 volts, and I'm, I'm going to hook that across the positive and negative of the battery. And we're going to look at my amp gauge. Well, I'm going to look at it. We're at point, point 0.1 amp draw, so it's pretty charged enough. This is reading like 6 volts, um, like really close to 6 volts, and then. Uh, we put 7 volts to it. If the battery was good, it would load it down my power supply more, but it's not. Because we're putting 7.2 volts on a 6.5, on a 6 volt battery, 6.5, and, and max it'd probably go to is like 6.7 or 6.8, so it wasn't going to climb a whole lot long, whole lot higher. Now, one other thing we could try to do, see if this helps anything at all, is we could lay it face down, we'll hold the leads together, metal on metal. And what this does it resets the unit there's a um, these are software driven units they've got I mean they got a lot of other stuff going on with them but the software driven units and I want to this will dis uh, discharge any residual voltage or anything stored up in the capacitors or board or whatever else is inside there so yeah, this is a little long. This is usually, this is usually long enough. So I know this battery is good. Let's just we'll hook up their battery back to it again. Oops. Doesn't seem to be any faster. Let's uh, just for heck of it, let's hook my power supply. Seven point two volts shouldn't be too much for it. Let's see if it's any faster. Probably not. What the heck? Nope. You can't see the light fashion, but I don't know if you can hear it clicking or not, but it's about the same as it was, didn't change anything. So I don't know what we can do for the same besides let the customer just take it as is because you can't get any uh, parts for these units. They don't, I mean, batteries and knobs, and that's about it. So, but the unit itself is performing like it's supposed to, voltage-wise, and and everything seems to be working fine. These are good little units for the most part. We don't see a lot of them um, come in for repair. This one's still got the original battery, and it's we're in 2024 now. Seven years old. I do the math in my head for a second. Seven-year-old battery, and still doing pretty good. So. Gallagher's got a lot of built-in technology to their units that, mo that monitor the battery and try to prolong the life of the battery the best that they can. So, I, like Parmac, I'll get two, three, four years maybe out of one of their batteries on their solar units. Drop the washer.
washer again. I think I got replacements I can put on there. All right, let's just see what kind of spark this little thing throws. Let's turn, turn the light off overhead. Get rid of the glare. It won't be a big spark, but it'll be something. I mean, it's something, but these things weren't made to run hundreds of acres. Small jewel unit. I don't know what else we can do to this thing. This, this is this is it for this little te this little video. But there's some information again. So if you've got a uh, electric fence box, like to send to us for repair, we have to take a look at it. Uh, this guy's semi-local, so we won't charge him anything for looking at it. We'll just um, tell him to take it as is and. Um, no harm, no foul. So there you go. Until next time, see you guys later on. And have a good rest of your day.